That is it. There is only one reasonable conclusion. Baylor football is cursed. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. For the second straight week, it is Monday. Um, Drake Toll alongside Cameron Stewart. Both of us for a lot of straight weeks, it's been Monday. Like, yeah. There's a Monday every week. For it's been consistent at least. If there's one thing you can count on, probably, probably not stellar quarterback play for Baylor on Saturdays. That but too. That you too. can count on Monday. Today between, is that. usually between Sunday and Tuesday, but it, leap years spend, and stuff. It gets wild. They move around all the time. Yeah. If you've spent the last 48 hours deciding that you're not upset about the Baylor loss, deciding that you're over it, it was just sports. There are more important things. I, I am here to bring you out of that mentality and back into a void of sadness yes. because the it is uh, last week. As I was thinking of words to explain the Baylor loss on Saturday, <laughs> I, I thought demoralizing, humiliating, defeating, deflating, all of those words. And then I remembered last week's game was the most humbling loss of the, of the Dave Aranda era. Correct. Followed by the most demoralizing loss of the oh, Baylor yeah. era. And I have been in college for four years now. That was my last home game as a student. Far and away, the single biggest heartbreak in a Baylor football game in the last four years. Without and, a doubt. It's not even close. And it could have been, arguably, the greatest home game of your tenure had they you for it. the field goal. Like, euphoric beating beating OU last year it was fantastic like <laughs> take nothing away from that we had some fun games in 2019 beat UT at home last year but that one could have been could have been the best could have been the could have been the best yeah this was the most gut-wrenching for sure I think the biggest mental tangle in my head the last 48 hours has been uh a is this the toughest loss as a Baylor fan yeah. Different ways to go about that. Um, and B, is it better or worse to experience that gut wrenching loss with a bunch of people who are feeling it like you? Like, I know there's a bunch of TCU fans mm-hmm. there, but you know what I mean? Like, you're in a stadium versus a boat that I've been in a lot where, say, like the Patriots have a gut wrenching loss and I'm watching it here and no one else cares. Their life right. goes on or even they're happy about it. And it's just me suffering alone and nobody understands my pain. Mm-hmm. So that's been the biggest mental t- that that could be a different episode. That could be it, a different episode. We're here to talk about this game. Specifically. To me, it's kind of the circle of suck. There's it's this. all, it's all bad. It's all right. bad. But and there are levels to this when it's bad and you have people around you to suffer through it with. I think it's worse because I, see, I think it's better. We joke about it. We have a sick sense of humor because the go keyboard ahead, warriors are out in full. I opened Facebook, which is usually the worst thing you can do after football losses and during election season. Please, please avoid Facebook. If any social media app should die, it's not Twitter, it's Facebook. And I immediately was like, all right, well, everybody's fired, myself including probably. I'm somehow yeah. responsible for this loss. Yeah. I I do, I will say from our perspective up in the press box, it was insane how there there's a moment where they run on the field goal unit and you're thinking, well, this is it. They're not going to call a timeout. It's like half a moment, by the way. And it it's is so quick. It's quick enough. The kicker couldn't go through his routine. Like couldn't even stretch yeah. the arm out. Couldn't even, nope. you know, and right. then within the span of about 15 seconds, it goes from Baylor fans have packed the lower bowl to rush the field to silence, silence. Okay. And I don't know, I've never in person for sure seen a game that fast flip where you just think, what what just happened? What it's, how it's did- it's one of the great phenomenon of sports. We talked about it last year with the McPlay. It almost never happens. And, and it might this might not even fit into the category of going from certain victory to certain defeat in one play, like the McPlay was. I mean, yes. that was full on. We've already visualized that Oklahoma State is going to score and win this game. And, and maybe that's a benefit of like we hadn't really pictured it yet. It maybe didn't hurt as much because I couldn't visualize 
the fans actually coming out on the field because everything happened so quickly that last minute and a half. But the certain victory, the certain defeat like that is just so killer. It's so killer. It makes you question everything about your life. It just happens and you don't even – you barely even react. I mean you could hear a pin drop in pin the drop. press box yesterday mainly because I don't – like even if they call a timeout and we see it coming, it's like, oh, man, there's a groan. But no one even sees it coming. Like it's yeah. just – Bang, run them on, kick it. Oh, it sucks so hard, Drake. So it's, great. I, I'm reliving it now. It sucks <laughs> so hard. Well, Baylor can't call a timeout oh, either. Dave Arandas no, did. He no. made the, the perfect I, one, call. One person did make a make that take. Was it yeah. Barstool? Ice the kicker. Yeah, Why didn't we ice the kicker? kicker? That's Why the we ice take the kicker? on the internet for the second week in a row. Congrats to you, Barstool. Yeah, second. what was it? Like a 41-yard field goal to ice the kicker? <laughs> From 55, yeah. definitely not that. Well, no, goal. let's not. No, let's not let them. Let's not make them make them rush yeah. out and kick it. Let's let's call the timeout. By the let way, set up for a 41 Some people know this. Some people definitely know this. There is a some substitution rule. And <laughs> some people learned it. That you can't sub people on. People, they knew it though. This first, they, these people, they knew there's a substitution rule, so you can't sub people on too. So there's nothing Baylor could do. No. You are hapless aside from blocking the field goal. And I like watching. Uh, by the way, I haven't watched it back. I I refuse I to watch it. Back. I really can't. This is not going to be 60, 61, 58. That already happened. There's no way to Donati can't take that away from Baylor fans. <sighs> but since sixty one fifty eight, things have not been too great for the home team. Oh, and four McLean. That that yeah. fun aside, that just the it goes in, and the first thing you see is the Baylor players just boom, they all lay down. It's just surrender That's Cobra tough. immediately as Dave goes and shakes Sonny Dyke's hand. And Dave says, maybe the most wholesome Dave quote that we've got in a press conference. I wish I could take the pain away. I really, I really think he does wish that. That's some John Green stuff. That's John Green stuff. He hits the podium, told the guys. I wish I could take the pain away. Oh, Dave. God bless. Me too. And then he says, that's pretty much our season. That's a, He's like, the, this is everything in 2022. It, in it, which he's show. basically said two weeks in a row in two very different performances. Yes. Uh, basically, I mean, I think what he's trying to get at is we just can't, can't have one thing without the other. You know, yeah. we can't just put it totally together. Like this week he said... You know, I was really proud of the fight. You know, we we got knocked down last week and we didn't fight back. This week we did, and we just we just didn't get the final result. You know, last week I thought we had a good week of practice, but then we got hit in the mouth and didn't fight back. Like it's it's just not putting it a hundred percent together, and that just sucks to hear because that's exactly what Baylor season has been. Yeah, you know, yeah. the expectations have changed week to week. Really, it's almost hard to imagine that this was a ten number 10 ranked team in the preseason, not just because they're six and five, yeah. but because the, the goalposts seem to change for this team week in week. Right. Week in, week the, out. And what's so, what is really baffling to me is how this season happened because of the way the schedule is built. And that's, that's a good point that, by you. I, I want to get into that, but first I want to get into all the way deep into simply safe. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this the other day, but I got a, I got a direct message on Twitter. I'm going to pull it up right now. I got a direct message on Twitter from a guy who I don't think exists, by the way. So that's why I posted it, because I thought it'd be pretty funny. Uh, this guy says, currently gathering your info. This is from Dark Carter on Twitter. Currently gathering your info. When I figure out where you live, I'm going to beat you senseless. Lock your doors, Drake. Oh, yeah. Little do you know, I have Simply Safe. You're not getting to me. Simply Safe Security Systems has an HD camera that can tell me exactly who you are, Mr. Dart. So if you do try to beat me senseless, you cannot. Simply Safe keeps you protected and it'll call the authorities every time Mr. Dart tries to get into my house. Uh, my car's already been broken into and it won't be broken into anymore ever again because Simply Safe exists. Right now, 50% off. The holidays is when people break into your house, too. They break into your house on the holidays, 50% off, 24-7 professional monitoring system at Simply Safe. Don't miss your chance right now to save big. 50% off any new Simply Safe system, simplysafe.com slash locked on college. No safe like Simply Safe. Uh, 
on par with kind of the treatment I got from TCU fans this weekend. Legendary moment. Cam and I are t- we're together. He can Big corroborate moment. the story. Yeah. I'm walking back to my car and I hear Drake, Drake from the tail the Baylor tailgate area. It's a kid in a TCU jersey. I look over, giving me the bird, man. Just a healthy bird from distance. It's a good. It's a good look. Sixty yards away. It was. It was. It was something. And the can't fact fault them for it. Honestly, being a sports I was, fan, knowing you, like I, I can't fault him. I was impressed. I was wholly impressed. To which I, you know, he was. He started videoing me as if I was going to do something crazy. <laughs> ah. Um, I just approached him very calmly, slowly. I was like, Hey guy, what's going on, man? Turns out he runs the barstool TCU account. So we made amends after you cross the whole like screens thing and anonymity. You can be friends out there. There's civility. Unlike the dark guy who's going to beat me senseless. Someone <laughs> also DM me a couple up like three weeks ago and said, I am going to hunt you like an animal. Nothing ever happened. Nothing ever Most came. Dangerous that. Game, I, man. I did tweet that one out too. And no one ever saw that tweet. They didn't care. They could care less. I will say, yeah, admin did have some glowing things to say about you in person. Admin, the admin of the Barcelona TCU oh, account. Oh, past the I bird. thought you were like, talking about like, your Middle Eastern oil tycoon friend, admin. No, no, <laughs> I don't know anyone named admin. Uh, and and we said it in the car too. Uh, I was like, man, um, that literally goes from like what could have been the best game of your tenure. Um, at McLean Stadium to then like an unforget, you know, like that's unforgettable for yeah. TCU fans that like went mm-hmm. to that and saw that live. That's unbelievable. And we are going to see that so much. I haven't watched it either, but there's going to be no way to avoid it over the next year. Drake. Yes. As a student, it did go from the best win of my tenure as a student to the worst loss in literally three seconds, yeah, literally three seconds. The baffling part of this to me, had you told me preseason Baylor's going to go six and six, I wouldn't have been shocked. And I know you're out there like, oh, you would have been shocked. Uh. When we did floors and ceilings, my ceiling was 12 and 0, my, or 11 and 1, maybe. My floor was 5 and 7. There was a way where catastrophic events would happen and Baylor would go 5 and 7. Hello, pretty close to it. And those catastrophic events, though, to me, were... Baylor goes one and five on the road. Right. Baylor is three and three at home now and three and two on the road. If Baylor finishes three and three on the road, had you told me that preseason? It's like, oh, the floor is easily eight games, easily eight and four. This team might not get to seven now. Probably not. Probably not. And of course, the three and three at home is a little misleading because they are one and three against real competitive football teams, teams on their level at home. Um, and that I agree with you. I was thinking the same thing. Ar- I was arguably like, 0-3, by the way, because the oh, one win Kansas is still square. Kansas. Come on, Kansas is a bold team. They beat them. They're on their level. They're going to finish with the same record. Um, I, I agree with you in that when I looked at this, I was like, it, it's that every other year thing for Baylor until those two leave the conference of, Oh man, we've got UT on the road. We've got Oklahoma on the road. Uh, we've got Tech on the road. You know, do yeah. with that what you will. And it's like, ah, you know, now there's really no margin of error at home. This, that, and the other. We have BYU on the road, and that has not been the issue. <clears throat> it hasn't been the issue. And like I said earlier, I'm a kind of weird way of saying it, but like the goalposts changed every week. Like, yeah. Uh, when we were ranked number 10 in the country, I would have thought six and six was weird. But after we lost to Oklahoma State and go to three and two, I'm like, yeah, you know, that could that could well happen. After West Virginia, I might have might have thought they'd be lucky to go six and six. Yeah. Uh, because we literally had the statement of where do the wins come from? So that's what I mean by like it's just been like one of those ESPN graphs of like win probability just up and down, like the whole season of I don't know what we're gonna get this week. I don't know if they could beat the team across from them this week. And I don't know if they'll win next week. They might. Uh, But that's why I can't get, like, too worked up about it. Of, like, how in the world are they going to go six and six? It's like, well, we kind of saw it early on. Um, I personally can't really get mad, like, really point out one thing in this TCU game. 
and be like, this was an abject failure. This is just not good enough for Baylor standard. I, I can't pick out one thing like that. I thought they played really well. Um, but that's what makes it suck the most. Last week, we could pick apart everything they did wrong. Yeah, which was a lot. Reasonably so. Uh, this week is not so much the case. And that's been this season. Blake Shapin and Jeff Grimes were catching strays on social media. Oh, they are like they're the, catching directs. The two most hated guys uh, in oh, Waco yesterday, this weekend. And tomorrow's show will be dedicated pretty much specifically to Jeff Grimes and Blake Shapin. And, I'm going to take some moral high ground in that show, too. That, yeah, well, um, yeah. yeah, you can come on for it, whatever. <laughs> the, the, uh, what well, tomorrow's show will also cover bowl games and where Baylor's going to go. Bum, ba, da, bum. They are doing Armed it. Forces they are, are going to go. They're got, they thankfully they locked it in a little bit ago. Armed Forces Bowl would be funny. That's it. Carter, isn't it? MNC Carter? Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Whatever. Like, let's just do it. Bring it uh, all on. Get it out of your system now. Before we hear from Dave, what's what is next for this team? What against Texas? Literally, what is there to play for? For either of these teams? None. Yeah, pretty much nothing. Um, pretty much nothing. So I don't. I really don't know how that goes. Uh, because in, in reality, Baylor didn't have much to play for this week too, but, um, they really did hype up the whole senior day thing in the locker room and we heard it pregame and postgame. So that seems like something they were really buying into, but I, I don't know, man, I, the Baylor UT rivalry isn't quite what it used to be in terms of like pure hatred, um, from a player standpoint. So I don't know, uh, if it's going to be motivation like that i i have no idea what to expect next but in my time watching baylor they have always gotten up for the ball game so there's something yeah. to look forward to in that that is salvage that has salvaged disappointing seasons yeah. more than once at my time at baylor yeah where they've just you, you know not like a big bowl even some you know no holiday, holiday you, bowl. almost like, always yeah, not yeah yeah why not the cactus why not win bowl it? 2016 why not win six it? in a row they dominated a ranked team yeah. And it was like, that was awesome. That was great. Yeah. And so the rest know. of the country didn't care, but moral, moral. Right. It, it really is like the most like kind of wholesome, like, why don't we just enjoy our alma mater winning a football game? Right? Ended, I ended love Baylor. Our, I love football. And we won. And that's, that's what it's like when you play in the holiday bowl or the Texas bowl. It was like, you know what? Screw the fact that, UT was in the Sugar Bowl. We won the Texas Bowl. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, we've got a good team coming back. You yeah. know, that's what it's going to be like again this year. And so. no one can take that from you. No yeah. one can. No one. That TCU trophy. in the playoff, pff, who cares? <laughs> we, Don't get killed we, by Georgia. Yeah. Couldn't we be us. We the Cheez-It Bowl, and we're going to be better than y'all next year. We'll fall into the trap again. Cheez-It Bowl, Orlando, Disney World, Sea World. Putt putt golfing. The playoff, what is it in like Phoenix? <laughs> it's like the worst city in America. Yeah. <laughs> I've been for sure. You got to go to Phoenix and lose? No. All right. Whatever. Have fun doing that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Dave, uh, what do you think about the loss the other day? First, though, before you tell us, I tell everyone at home. About Nissan. I'm bringing Cam back. Uh, kind of off the cuff. Cam, what's the Nissan? For the second week in a row. <laughs> what was that? What what's was the Nissan? That? What's the Nissan thrilling moment of the game? That's a good one. I want to oh, give you. No. I want to give you. I want to give you a player. I want to give you a player. Not the second week in a row. We're, we're no, I'll give. I'll moment. give you one. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Kelsey Johnson's second touchdown, which I think gives them the 21 to 20 lead. Which was in slow motion, by the way. Awesome, dude. Third down, passing situation, no confidence in the world up in the press box. And Blake's throwing right to the goal line, putting his stuff on the table, right to the goal line. And who is there but our new hero, Kelsey Johnson? And it puts Baylor ahead because of the missed extra point. 
from TCU. Yay. That's an Eastside that awesome. moment. That was, I mean, the it, place got lit. It was great. The Monterey Baldwin play, which mm-hmm. is actually probably the most important play from Baylor in the, the game. 70 yards on third down and 10. Yes. Third and 10. You're about to give TCU the ball back. You're only up one. Plenty of time left on the clock. And Monterey almost takes it to the house. That's probably the biggest play, but Kelsey Johnson, awesome. This segment, always inspired by the thrilling, thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's lineup of vehicles. Pursue your thrills. Frontier, Armada, Pathfinder, NissanUSA.com. Dave Aranda, take it away. It's good to see you guys. You know, um, it's a tough locker room. And so, um, you know, I told them that I wish that uh, – that we, that I could take the pain away. I wish that you could say that, you know, you put together a great week and you bounce back from a hardship and kind of put the pieces back together um, to fight for, uh, you know, another day um, and do all of it in, in kind of a right manner. And you wish that all that stuff would work out in the end, you know, and so... We all know that that's not the case, and you know I just I respect the team, and you know it's I think this game in a lot of ways is kind of a microcosm of us, and you know for them to kind of fight and kind of stick with it, I um, I have a lot of respect for them. You know we've got um, a game here coming up quick. You know tomorrow we got to be back at it. I think I'm meeting with coaches uh, early in the morning to watch the tape, and then we're with our players. Uh, tomorrow afternoon to kind of get going for the next one. We have a, a game here um, on Friday, so it's a shorter week. But uh, a lot of credit uh, goes to TCU. I thought they fought hard. I thought that they um, you know, stayed in it. They've been in a few games, I think, like this one we just played and uh, have a lot of respect for Coach and that team. But, uh, you know, we'll bounce back from this. Take any questions you guys got. Dave, obviously Max Duggan's a very experienced veteran QB. How important is, is it to have a guy like that in that kind of situation where you got to rally a team? Yeah, I thought um, I thought he did a great job of of keeping plays alive. You know, the times that we were able to get some pressure, I thought he was able to elongate and kind of make plays with his legs. I thought you know the 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 quarterback draw there at the end was a big play, um, but you know, I thought he, he was a, he was able to make some throws that were kind of bang bang throws. We hadn't really seen that a ton on tape from him, and so I was impressed with him that way too. But um, to have someone in there that you kind of have to have it all together in terms of your rush lanes and tight coverage always makes it difficult. Dave, y'all had moved the ball so well all day. Was there anything TCU did on those last two possessions, or do you think it was more execution on your end to not get a first down? Yeah, sure, sure, disappointing uh, series. And, you know, I thought there was, there was plenty of discussion going into that on the looks that we we're expecting and, and just all of it. And I just – I'd have to look at the film to tell you exactly – it just seemed like the piles were, were going the other way than what we'd want. And, you know, it's, it's, it's disappointing and it's frustrating after, you know, the day of running the ball that we had. Uh, you made them use the timeouts like you wanted to on that last possession, but do you wish you'd been more aggressive on that last offensive possession? On which one was that? That was the last, your last one where, you know, they had to call their timeouts. Oh, okay. So you left them at 134. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought I would, I would think that if it wasn't for some of the success we had running the ball. I think some, there was tight coverage for sure, and it was a sellout to stop the run. Uh, but the, there was times they were doing that throughout the game, you know, and the runs that we had were accounting for that. And so um, I'd have to look at the film to see exactly what happened. But, you know, I was, I was uh, confident with us, you know, doing what got us to that point. Uh, 
Dave, I know the rule on the substitution that if it's a field goal, mm -hmm. you have to know that they're going to do that so they can't stop the, or they can't, you can't substitute mm -hmm. or slow down the clock. Mm -hmm. Can you slow down at least substituting somebody to create some more of chaos on that play? I don't think so. Yeah. Coach, now, you, you, last week you had the disappointment of losing in the way that you all did, and you responded. Is it easier or more difficult to respond tomorrow in the way that you, manner that you guys lost today than it would be you know, to lose by, you know, 20 or 30? Losing's always difficult. I think, you know, I think when you, when you go through a week and you, you go through hard things together and you invest and you sacrifice, the thought is always that you're going to win. And so it kind of builds throughout the week, even if you've, you, know, you lost it on a particular Saturday. You build it back up. And so any time that you know, it kind of goes back down, there's always a hurt that goes with that. And um, you know, I think it's, it's way um, brave of guys to continually to give everything they have when they go through some of the hurts that you go through. And so to continue to show up and to give their best and to, you know, be a leader and push others when they, you know, maybe don't want to show up because they don't want to go through that again. I think for sure that's, that's part of the journey we're on right now. And so I think either way, it's difficult. That's, uh, Dave, you had mentioned last week that you were disappointed in the way that y'all didn't come back off the mat when you mm -hmm. got down. This week, you know, second half, y'all fall behind and manage to rally and put a couple of drives together. How impressed were you with the way that they were able to fight back, especially compared to last week? I appreciate that question. I thought um, I was way impressed. And, you know, um, it's, been, it's been a long time coming for that. And to see it and then just to be on the sidelines and the huddles, to hear it and to, you know, a lot of it, you can feel what's going to happen prior just being on the sidelines, just the energy that's there and the talk and the kind of the vibe, I guess. So a lot of that was good. And you knew that we were going to, we were going to fight through this. And so uh, way appreciative of the team. I think uh, for sure the loss and the manner of the loss is, is a true gut punch, but there's a lot of growth today. Dave, back to that fire drill field goal at the mm -hmm. end. Uh, TCU has to have a lot go right for that mm -hmm. to happen. I mean, you know, nobody jump, 11 guys on the field, mm -hmm. all of that. Uh, have you – I mean, you've coached football a long time. Have you ever been a part of a play like that, either the good side or the bad side? Yeah, it's something that you always practice, and it's something that, um, you know, for the, you have to kind of weekly stay up with that so that when there is that opportunity, that it's not a shock, that it's not a thing, you know? And so, uh, credit to them. That was Dave Aranda, the fearless leader of the Baylor Bears, who left a lot of points on the board this yeah. weekend. Missed 46-yard field goal. Blake Shapin does a jump ball interception. Baylor gets the red zone like 15 times and only scores three of them. There were a lot of points left on the board. Uh, a lot of drives installed, a couple on fourth down where you're just thinking, okay, that sucks. If you're going to beat the number four team in the nation, you can't do that. And they did that, and they lost. Tomorrow's show, should Baylor fire Jeff Grimes? Question mark? Well, I don't know. Uh, and should Baylor fire Blake Shapin, who has like three years of eligibility left, but is probably still older than Max Duggan? I should look into that. This has been, it always will be. Um, sorry that Baylor lost, everybody. I'll try to at least... <laughs> Uh, at least at least there's kind of basketball locked on Baylor